Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be taking a hammer shot and a maverick and combining them together to make something new. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily news and it's never been done. Everything's been done. I'm certain there's a Reddit thread or something where you're going to find something like this. But I haven't seen a video, so as I do this, I'm going to go ahead and film it and see how that goes. Uh, have a lot of nostalgia for this blaster. So I was actually initially just thinking about revamping it and sprucing it up a bit. Then got the idea for this. So without me rambling anymore, let's just go ahead and jump right into the video. Okay, so here we are with another hammer shot mod. I have a hammer shot that I got at Goodwill, and I have a upgrade spring, but that's been shown on video a thousand times. What I want to do is take this and integrate it into this. And it's funny because whenever I first started looking at this, I had a whole bunch of just various old blasters I had thrifted that I had laying on the store around my hammer shot. And uh, as, as I'm looking at all these various blasters, I couldn't decide on what piece would look good to cover up this gap here that there's so many 3D printed kits and things like that for. So as I was doing that, I actually, you know, saw three of uh, these Mavericks laying off to the side. So I ended up picking up them and I was testing them. And one of them worked perfectly. And I was hitting the wall at 45 feet, 40, 45 feet. And that's really good for some. I was getting all nostalgic and playing with it and then came back in and just sat it down and looked at it and was like, man, could I have the nostalgic fun factor thrown in with my hammer shot? And yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Uh, I don't know if this is going to look ugly or not. You may only like it if you have a nostalgic sweet spot for the Maverick. So I've already made a cut here and I've made a cut here and did that with a hacksaw not very straight and i cut way behind where i actually wanted it to be cut which is more up here i generally will just go through and trim that down with a dremel as need be or file it the rest of the way into shape and i'm going to make the rest of the cuts using my dremel rotary tool with a cutting wheel and of course most importantly i will be wearing eye protection
Okay, this is what I was essentially going for, if this makes sense. Uh, of course, I haven't glued anything. The black dots are where uh, I need to drill holes so that I can access the screws. Now, I did have to file out this area. I could have ground out more of the inside of the shell, but I didn't want to. I figured I'd do 50-50. Also, since you can now see through the shell, once I split the two parts in half and do all the filling and stuff, it'll be pretty easy to leak any sort of adhesives down through there to get everything uh, attached together. Now I'm going to go ahead and hand sand this to get all the little burrs and stuff and even straighten everything out. drill out the holes for my screws. I'm actually just going to board them and not actually drill in a sense. Okay, I have sanded and filed and worked on every little nook and cranny to get this to fit together uh, as best I can. It's definitely not perfect, but I do feel like this definitely uh, fills this out a lot. And I went through already and put some darts in it and shot it through here. None of them got snagged on the barrel hole, which I didn't think they would, but... There is, of course, one other thing about this that just bugs the heck out of me. And I know it's not just me. It bothers other people, too. And that's, like, I get it. It's for a sling. But I really just don't like the way this looks. I wish they would have rounded it off. I, it, it irks me. I don't know why. So the next thing I'm going to do is chop off the base of the grip here because I want to basically put this end cap on the end of the hammer shot here. It's going to make it even more comically large than it already is, especially with this, but it will feel much, well, even more like sort of a Hellboy Judge Dredd style blaster whenever it's all done. So that's going to be the next thing, figuring this out. All right, I chopped off the end here. And I traced out with a paint marker where I'm going to do my initial cuts, hoping that I can get it to match up. I'm actually going to cut a bit bigger than my lines. I'm not going to cut on the inside. I'm going to cut on the outside a bit bigger, much like before. That way I can file and sand and trim down as needed. Okay, I've gone ahead and cut out my end piece here. And it'll 
at least in theory, pop on up into here, but I can't get any further until I take this apart. And since I'm kind of dying to just put this on anyways, I'm going to go ahead and glue this together with super glue, just an initial bond. Uh, and I've roughed up the areas where it's going to be bonded, which is right here on either side and on the other side of the rail and along here. Okay, I've given it a while for the glue just to make sure that it's fully cured, not going to stick to my hands whenever I touch it. And I've removed all the screws. I'm going to go ahead and pop this sucker open. Sorry, safety sticker. You're done for. Okay, now I can start going through on the back side of the shell and filling some of this stuff in, but I can also get rid of this, which is a necessity because it was interfering with my cut work on this and figuring out exactly what all else I needed to do. Hmm. I don't think that's actually going to look too bad when all is said and done. That'll actually look pretty cool. Bit big, but I can also fill this with something to make it a little heavier so that the balance is better at least or something. We'll see. Okay, for now though, I'm just going to lift all these out and set them off to the side so they don't get dirt and grit and dust and all that other fun stuff with them. I'll set them off with my worker uh, spring replacement that I have, although I'm not sure if it's actually a worker or if it's NF Strike, but it's one of the two. It's in a worker box, but it's not the box it came in. Okay, take this out too. Alrighty. Okay, I have rough sanded this and gradually filed and whittled it down to the shape that I want so that it will fit together relatively well on both sides. And now I need to rough up the edges here so the glue will work a little better. the same thing on the bottom of this here. Let me take a look at it. Where am I going to be contacting? All basically on the bottom.
now, I can go ahead and glue the grip on. At least enough to get it to hold until I separate the shell. Okay, okay. Since I've done just a basic light attachment at just a couple spots, I'm going to need to go back on the back side here and begin to really glue this stuff in together more solid. Uh, generally, you would use DevCon and then pack it in with epoxy putty or something like that, but I can't use things like DevCon and epoxy putties because of my allergies. So, what I have to do is take crazy glue and baking soda this stuff here if you get gel or for example the gorilla glue type it just doesn't work like this but for this stuff what i do is drip it on in there drop in the baking soda and then it will begin to harden up And I'll do that layer after layer until I can get this all built up. Okay, I've got everything pretty well glued together and filled in. In areas where there's like a big gap and there's nothing in the back, I'll end up taking, no joke, a bit of toilet paper and stuffing it in from behind and then just applying glue and baking soda like that until it fills in. I did the same thing here where the gaps were on the grip and now nice and solid glad I didn't actually ding the blaster and was just hitting that but yeah so that's that and I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside for now because next what I started working on is the trigger so what I did on another hammer shot you may notice the trigger here does not look like a stock trigger and it's because I altered it. I mean, honestly, I think you're best just going with buying a trigger that's angled back, especially the triggers that come back even further. So you have to stretch even less. But the thing was with my size hands and the way this trigger just curves up, I can't get purchase on it. This I can. And I even slightly sloped the end of it here up this way so I'd have a bit more purchase and a bit more leverage whenever I put my thumb on it and you'll also notice that the actual original trigger stops about here everything from here up to the actual top is all super glue and baking soda if I just sawed the trigger opened it up 
and shoved a piece of plastic in there like it is now and didn't cover all this up then this would just break immediately and that's why I say I don't really suggest doing this I'm showing in the video because if I don't people are gonna ask in the comments or whatever what did you do different to the trigger did you put it no I didn't put anything different this is still a stock trigger I just altered it but like I say I haven't run this like repeatedly in wars to the point where I can say that this is durable and will hold up I feel confident that it will otherwise I would not have done it but as far as for the video's sake I can't really suggest that you do that another thing of note here if you're deciding to do something insane like alter the shape of your trigger like I am doing right now another thing to keep in mind is the entire underside of the trigger there's kind of like a, a plus or a cross shape underneath it you can still see the remnants of it here I just sand that down reason being if you don't whenever you go to prime it that little like bump that sticks down will rub against your shell on both sides so before I started you know adding all the glue and stuff onto this I checked to make sure it wasn't going to drag or rub and that it would like prime and move smoothly and all that stuff but it's looking pretty good I do feel like I need to add a little bit more to the back side of this trigger, but it's coming along pretty nicely so far. Okay, I am relatively satisfied with the shape of the trigger that I got. I squared off the back end a bit, uh, just so I have an edge there to catch my thumb. I don't want it slipping off. Try to follow the shape and keep it round. The original trigger stops about here, so I extended it out about that much further with super glue and baking soda and then sanded it and filed it that's the other thing if you haven't done anything like this like I said this stuff's so hard you can't really sand a shape into it you really need to use files on it just like steel reinforced epoxy so now all that's really left to do is pop out the spring and put in a new one this replacement spring that I have don't drop my screws everywhere first uh, to the bottom I'm not gonna put a spacer on this I am going to pack a bunch of grease into it. The actual uh, seal is really good to the point where it's actually really hard to pull it back just because it's actually sealing. And they put a decent amount of grease in there. I don't know, I might square it in a little bit more. But all this other stuff has nothing in it, so that definitely needs to be greased up and lubed up. Okay, that is, yeah, that is considerably harder. Wow. Okay, that's good though. Probably could still put a spacer on it, but I'm not. Okay, so I went to fire it, and it would not fire a dart. And the reason being, I don't know if you can see this here, but on the bottom, the way this piece here is molded, there's a lip that curves up here, and the dart just catches on it. I can, of course, sand that down, file this out, and I'm pretty sure the dart will clear it, but even if not, I kind of like just having the totally flat squared off front 
without this tip sticking out. So I may do the work on it, but I may not even, I may not like having it in. I may just fill that. I don't know. So <laughs> after that, of course, it fires just fine because this lines up with more than enough space through for a dark travel through it. One thing I noticed between the two of these that I've done, this one I did over a year ago, and this front piece is not 3D printed. It is off of an Air Zone blaster. It's from Primetime Toys. I'm assuming that that just became Dart Zone. Uh, I don't know the name of the, the blaster because there's no name on it. The only thing that was on it was like a copyright date and the sticker that said Air Zone. So I'm pretty sure it's Dart Zone, but it's that old. It was originally this blue color that you see there. I'm sorry, I don't know the name, but it did fit and look quite nice. Uh, it was a nice way to just kind of fill this out the rest of the way, even though it wasn't quite angled perfect. I, I kind of faded it into here strange. I don't know. But I have noticed this is way heavier in the front than this, even though this has a much larger chunk of plastic added to it. And I think that just comes down to the fact of, like, the steel reinforced epoxy putty that I put on the underside to hold it in place and all the stuff that I put in there and I think the other thing is too that makes it feel less heavy when you're holding it is having this butt plate essentially added onto it is balancing it out but it is still making my wrist tired so I'm gonna have to take it apart and I'm probably gonna put three copperhead BBs on either side on the bottom here because I don't want my wrist getting tired as I use this. I want it balanced so that whenever it's in my hand, the weight is is not constantly pulling my wrist and my arm down to just wear me out. Because it, it does just wear your wrists out kind of constantly hammer priming, especially if you're doing two. Another thing I did off camera since putting this back together was I had to shape this a little bit more. Even with the texturing, my thumb was just slipping off of it too much, and now it doesn't but it's in pretty much the perfect place and it's very easy for me to prime. And then I took some leftover pieces of this top part of the shell, cut them at an angle and just fit them in. So it would have a nice taper off here, a taper there, and then the taper coming down here, which I'm gonna have to do a little more sanding and take this apart because I didn't, didn't quite get that smooth. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and remove the internals now that I'm certain that it is going to fire and function and everything and start doing the rest of the sanding and the shell work. Okay, so it took a couple hours, but I did end up getting everything as sanded and smoothed out as I could and prepped for painting. And then I stood and paced around this for about another hour. This is about the third or fourth time that I've done that, trying to decide what colors to paint all of this. So this butt cap area here that I've also filled and sanded, I'm going to paint black, I guess. And I want to do a gray that's in between this dark gray and this light gray that's going to cover all the yellow. It will expand here with either a cutoff there or there'll be a stripe on the smooth flat side of the bottom going all the way back to here. And then the gray as well will be up here. However, the gray is going to follow this line and this curve here, and that's pretty much where it's going to stop, right above that indentation. So the top part of this piece will still be orange. And then paint this gray all the way around. I'm still not sure what to do about the N-Strike logo, though. I want to leave it there, 
But I don't know if I want to leave it there with the yellow in the background. Hmm. Paint around it, sand it off, or sand it and paint it a different color. I just don't know what to do. Okay, so I finished painting it. I did a semi-gloss black on the end of the grip here. I ended up painting this the same color gray as this. And that's pretty much it. And just painted the little screws a darker gray. So that gray was a little more spread out. I do want to put some more color up here, but I'm not sure what yet. Right now, I'm just waiting on that to dry. But the mail just came. And I got my new sights from 3D Printed Solid. And... This is a newer updated design. The original design had a set screw going through the top. This new one has this hinge system on the sides. So you can just tighten it up. And the black is for uh, my finisher that I've been working on and modifying. I think that, that it will go nice locked on there. And I actually got these two for this blaster so I don't know if they'll look good or dumb I have no idea but I just wanted something there without having to mod it and still be able to use the rail ah uh, yes that does look quite handsome I think on the blaster with the black that is on the stock and the pistol grip and yeah I might have to paint those screw heads black that's kind of bugging me but don't know if I like this one more than the set screw version, but I do like it nonetheless. One thing I will point out between the old version that I have here, which has the set screw in the top, and the new version with the screws on the side, is that the new version is about two, about two millimeters taller, maybe three. While I've been waiting on this paint to dry, I did file out the bottom of the piece for the barrel. I filed it out pretty paper thin and kind of angled it down in the back as well. Like I say, there was a lot of excess stuff here since the bottom was flat to fit in the barrel. And of course I saw it off the back side of it as well, but I still have enough just to fit it inside there. So hopefully it will stay and the dart will exit it. Okay, it's had time to dry, so time to throw it all back together. Okay, it's uh, put together now for a second time because when I just put it together there, I forgot that piece. I totally left this piece out. I wasn't going to bring that up, but if I don't, somebody will notice it anyways. So, the only thing left to do now is fire a few shots out of this. I'm going to be firing some X-Shot darts.
I like it. Okay, so this was a lot of fun to make. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video and it gave you some ideas and took your mind off of everything that's going on right now. I made this in part just to take my mind off of everything that's going on right now and I hope all of you watching this are staying safe. And does this look good? I don't know. I like it, but I also like weird things. And I have a soft spot for the Maverick, which is why I wanted to incorporate as much of that blaster as I could, but still keeping it looking like a hammer shot. Uh, why use this in a war? Probably not, honestly. Uh, I guarantee it shoots 70 feet per second or less. I've never had any hammer shot mod shoot any higher than 75. Uh, which isn't bad for something that I can operate one-handed. I could literally have two of these, and that's awesome. Like, don't get me wrong. There are benefits to it. I just like it more for, like, planking and playing around with, like, spinning it and stuff, and just having fun with it. And, like I say, just a soft spot for the Maverick. So, I don't know. I think if you have a soft spot for that, you'll probably be more partial to what I did here than if you don't. But... Yeah, thank you for checking out this video and watching, and if you enjoyed it, please, please leave a like and subscribe, and as always, have a great day.